Hello everyone and welcome back to this inventory series and we're continuing on by adding some features people have asked for and a few little fixes that people have wondered how to do as well. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to show you how to fix the click on the world and you lose the tab button and turning it off and on. We'll show you how to fix that and then we're going to make a start on the filtering system. So how to make a filter so you can sort out and show only the items you want to show in your particular grid. So let's get started and take a look at this. So when you've been building your inventory screen, you may have noticed a little bug that you want to fix. And if we go into the inventory screen and we get up our play menu, if I was to click anywhere other than my actual menu, so if I click over here, for example, on the right hand side, if it, I now to close the menu, nothing happens. Uh, and this is a common problem that people encounter when dealing with uh, HUDs and menus and things like that. So I'm going to show you how to fix that and how to make this all work for our inventory. So the reason why that happens is because the canvas panel that you typically will have on this part of your HUD, by default, will allow clicks right through it into the game world. So the game world now has the focus from the mouse, which is not what we want. So what you want to do is find your way to your player menu, where you've got your canvas panel, select the canvas panel, and go to the right-hand side and see its visibility settings. You want to change it from non-hit testable to visible. Compile and save that, and then we'll close that down there. So now when I bring up the menu, if I were to click over here on the right hand side, I can still hit the I button and it will still close it like normal. Okay. However, this does present another problem. The other problem is, is that now my hotbar is inaccessible. And the reason why is because our canvas panel is layered on top of our hotbar. So when I'm clicking, it's actually clicking on the canvas panel, not the hotbar buttons. So what I need to do is change the order of these so the hotbar is on top of this player menu widget. So to fix that, we need to change the ordering of our HUD elements. So when you add a widget to a screen, you can, or a viewport rather, you can change the ordering of it based on what's on top. So when we go to, to our player controller, and in there, you'll see create player hard widget happening on the begin play. And when you go to add the viewport, if you open up the advanced options, it tells you the Z order. Now, the higher this number is, the more on top it is. And so we want this hotbar one, the HUD, to be on top of everything else. So I'm going to change that to one. The other one, the player menu is set to zero, so it should appear beneath this one. So let's compile, save that. And now let's try that again. There we go. We can now drag and drop it from our hotbar into our character here. And it closes the window just fine. Brilliant. Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to make it so that we can filter our inventory. So we're going to go over to our inventory widget. Uh, UI. And we're going to go to the inventory uh, player menu. Okay, and in here we're going to go to the inventory grid, select it, and edit the inventory grid. And in here we're going to put in the filters. Now the filters we're going to put up the top, above here. This will count for different categories that we're going to have. So. What we need to do is create those buttons. Now, rather than making individual buttons um, loads of times, we can just make one and then duplicate it across. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a new widget. And we're going to create that. And we'll call this one W Inventory Button and open this up and it can be a very simple button so you put a button in with some text on it okay you change the background color change the black 0.8 okay and the text here will change the size down to like 16 and stuff like that okay so these things need to be editable, so let's rename them. And don't forget to tick the is variable box. 
button text and we'll name the button as well and let's call it button right. hit compile and then go to the graph and we want to set these up on the pre-construct with some variables so text here we'll drag out and we'll do set text plug that into the pre-construct and you want to promote the in text here to a variable and we want this text here to be editable and exposed on spawn in case we do choose to spawn it in but definitely editable and we'll just rename it button text next we're going to click on the button and we're going to go to unclicked and add the event for unclicked we're then going to go to the event dispatcher and we're going to make this do on button clicked if i put this into a call by dragging it into my graph here i get into my unclicked so now when i click on it it'll report back that it's been clicked on to whatever widget we put this into okay we can save that close that goes back to our inventory grid and in here we're going to right click on our scroll box actually we'll do it on border right click on the border wrap with a vertical box and the border you want to set to fill so go to the right hand side and fill it and it should cover up the whole space again next we're going to put in a horizontal box and we'll put that in above the border so it sits on top of our thing here and here we're going to put in the button that we just made so inventory button go into the horizontal box okay and there it is okay so let's now go and add the title for this one so go food and there's food and what we're going to do these buttons are going to filter off and on whether or not they've been selected okay so um we're going to make a couple of them so let's duplicate that a couple more times We've got food, materials, uh, equipment, and potions. And we'll do another one for junk. Okay. And we'll make them look a bit nicer. We'll just set that to all of them. And then on the size, hit the fill. And on the padding, I'm going to go and type in 10. So we've got these different paddings now. Space them apart, nice and easy. Eh? Okay, so yeah, when we click on them, we want them to light up or unlight. Because uh, it's going to filter out the grid and show only the things we want it to show. So let's make the button so they can change colour when we click on them. So let's go back to the inventory button widget. Go to the graph. And we call button on clicked. We want a variable for is on. And you drag this out, call this, and we're going to put in a condition. Actually, we don't need a condition. We can just do select. That'd be better. Uh, we'll drag out the button, <clears throat> set background color. And then from the ingot background color, we can do select node. We select the color. So if it's on, you can pick A. And we're going to make that just light up a little bit. Like that. And when it's B, we'll make it like so. Change the passive of that one as well. There we go. Uh, we also need to change the text probably as well. So we're going to drag out the text and do set color and opacity. And I'm going to drag that out and do select color. And uh, not select color, sorry. We need to break this out first, make select color, and then select color. There you go. And that B is on, goes into there too. But this one, if it's true, we want the text here to be white because we have a black background. And B would be black. So we'll just use that. And then it goes through on unclicked. 
when button is clicked, we will return back whether or not it is on or not. So let's go ahead and add that to the on clicked event dispatcher. It is on. Compile that. And you may get an error. And all it is is because the name here hasn't been changed correctly. Just refresh, right click and refresh the node and it'll fix it for you. And plug is on. Now, this has got a toggle that is on. So right at the start of this, you're going to drag out is on and do get and drag out again, do set. And you're going to flip it. And the way you flip a Boolean is you just not Boolean it. So if I do is on, not Boolean, and then put that back into itself, that'll basically flip it. So if it comes true, it will become false. If it's false, it becomes true. So we just leave it like that. Hit compile and save that. So now that's going to appear in inventory grid and when we click on them, they should light up and unlight when we click on them again. So let's go test that out first. So go into my menu and if I click on them, we can select them. So I can see the font isn't changing. Um, that's fine. We can work on that. Okay, so let's go back to them. Just fix that. So button text, uh, set color opacity. If it's on, oh, if it's on, wrong way around, so there you go. And now you need black, and that one needs to be white. There you go. Right, let's now test that out and make sure that's looking okay. Okay, so food becomes highlighted, unhighlighted. You can, the idea is that we'll be able to set multiple and it will filter out according to whatever we've got selected here. So, yeah, we'll do that in the next part. Brilliant. So there you go. We've now made the filter buttons. They're all ready to go. Uh, we can now make them actually do something. So join us in the next part. We're going to go through bit masking and how we can use it to filter out a selection of items in our inventory. You can watch the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.